Welcome to video number 21, Marlin and Pronterface. In this video, we're going to be going inside of our Marlin firmware and editing the configuration.h file so we can actually start talking to the printer. After that, we're going to go into Pronterface and for the first time actually start controlling the printer and making it move. Now in this video, once we get our printer connected, we are going to actually cover how to configure the configuration.h file so that our printer can talk to Pronterface. This is an extremely crucial step, so be sure to follow the instructions pretty closely while I'm changing them in the video. And also realize that a lot of my settings aren't going to be exactly like yours, but hopefully my settings will give you a very close starting point and at least get you in the ballpark to where your printer will start communicating and moving. So. Just know that over time, you're going to become very comfortable with going in and adjusting this firmware uh, because you're going to have to in order to get your printer calibrated. And over time, it just becomes second nature to open it up and you'll know exactly where to go and which values that you need to change in order to get your printer working at top quality. So follow me on the screen right now because I'm going to navigate inside the Marlin folder into the Marlin.ino file and this is going to be opened up by Arduino IDE and this is where we're going to find our configuration.h file. So what we need to do first is we need to change our board settings to the correct board which is going to be the Arduino Mega 2560. So make sure your board is set to the right thing. Now next we need to set our serial port number and in order to do that we need to type in a command into the run into the run line and that's going to be devmgmt.msc and you can pause and take a look at that if you need to slow it down. Uh, but this is going to take us to our device manager. We're going to scroll down, open up ports, and it will show us what our serial port number is that we need to change our configuration to. So we know it's COM6, we're going to change it to COM6. Now Arduino IDE knows which board and which serial port to communicate on so that we can load the firmware to the right board. Now in this part of the video I'm going to be moving kind of fast and so I'll give you an overview of what I'm doing and then I'm going to include a list at the end of all the configurations that I change in here. But you're going to see me going in and changing certain values and basically these settings are going to represent what I have for my printer and what you can see me changing here is actually represents the thermistors for the heat bed and the hot end and I change them to 10 and 11 and I leave the middle two at zero because we don't have those. But basically there's going to be some very key values that we're going to need to change in here. And you're going to have to go back in here and you're going to have to tweak it just a little more than I am right now. Uh, because everyone's printer is going to be a little bit different depending on what pieces you use and the parts that you built your printer out of, etc. So now most of this stuff you're not going to touch. You know, a lot of the stuff you're going to leave the same. Uh, what I'm doing right here with the invert uh, directions, this is going to change what direction your axis move whenever you click the home button. And I already know which, which of these values to change, so just type in what I'm typing right now. And if you read my document that I include in my instructions, I'll go into more detail about what these actual values are and what they represent. But for now, just go in and copy the changes that I'm making. And th this should hopefully get you up and going once we connect a prompter face here in a minute. So we're going to keep on moving on down through the configuration file. And what you see me highlighting here, this section is very important, especially this top row right here, the default axis steps per unit. Uh, because we're going to revisit this the most frequently because we're going to come back to this in the next video to do our calibration and these four values separated by a comma represent the x y z and extruder motors in that order and what i'm putting in right now are the default steps per unit so the printer will know how far to travel 
when we, for instance, tell the y-axis to travel 100 millimeters. This is going to determine that it knows exactly how far to go. And when all four of these things, or five of these motors, are working in conjunction, they need to be calibrated down to the correct step. So that's what those values are for. And like I said, you're going to see all this stuff again, most likely. Um, I'm, I'm really turning down the default acceleration right here because we're going to turn the speeds down pretty low uh, once we do our first print because they're at default, they're set to be very high. And it's bad if you have a really, really high acceleration because if you have some speeds really slow and different speeds really high, then the acceleration rate is just going to really try to handle that speed change and it can cause missteps. It can be too much for your motors. So I'm going to be turning down the speeds in a later step when we go into Slicer and you'll see what I'm talking about. And we are going to be keeping the acceleration down as well. Now when I just clicked on that arrow, this is compiling the sketch. This is going to, since we've already put in our board and our serial port, we hit compile sketch and it's going to load the firmware and our changes onto the board. So we just manually went in and edited the firmware to match our printer. And you know, I'll keep repeating it, you're gonna come back here many, many times. It's all a part of the calibration process. So uh, right now we're waiting for it to load and it looks as if it's already loaded. It actually tells you it's done uploading. So we're closing out of Marlin and now it's time to go into Pronter phase. So here we are, we just opened up Pronterface, and now we're going to make sure that Pronterface is set to the right settings to talk to our board, just like we did with the Arduino IDE. You can see I've got it on port COM6, and my baud rate is set at 250,000. So make sure your, your COM number and your port is set correctly, and make sure that your baud rate matches mine at 250,000. Now the first thing I'm checking on right here is the temperature. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the heat, the top one, and I'm going to set it to 230, which is actually pretty high, but that seems to be the right temperature for my printer and my filament. Yours may be way different. I mean, yours could be all the way down to 170, 180, which was how my last printer was. Now I click set, and you can see here I'm kind of, I'm taking my arrow and kind of moving it around the board, but you can see at the very bottom, underneath extrude in the left corner you can see that T where it says 59 now it's climbing up to 66 and you see the slash and then the number to the right of it that 230 is our target number and that number climbing on the left is our heat bed or sorry not our heat bed that's our that's our hot end trying to reach that 230 degrees Celsius and so that's what the T is the T is for the hot end and the other value to the right of it, the B, that is for our heat bed, and we haven't set that temperature. So it's, it's reading 20, which, which is good. That's reading the accurate room temperature. So 20 degrees Celsius, we're sitting around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's fair. So we're gonna leave the bed alone for now. And what you see me doing in the video, you see it moving, that's because I am clicking on the different pieces like I just clicked the Y home button and it sent the Y or the sorry the heat bed it sent it towards the end stop which means that our directions are right and right now I just clicked the Z home button and it is sending the Z axis going down towards the end stop which means the directions are good now you saw me reach in with my hand to hit the end stop it's because I haven't set the nozzle height yet which can be dangerous because if it's too low the hot end will run right into the board. So since I haven't set it yet, I clicked the home button and I touched it with my finger to manually cut it off. 
because that's the entire point of the mechanical end stop is when something pushes that trigger it's going to stop that axis so here I am showing you again I'm moving the z-axis down and I tap the trigger and there it goes so right now it's looking good I've homed in my axis and we know that you know for one it can move and it's moving in the right direction and that that's what we want to accomplish right now we know that we've got the firmware loaded and we know that we have prompter face speaking with the printer Th this is you know the beginning step so apart from the X the Y and the Z axis the last thing we need to test right here is the extruder we want to make sure that we're extruding in the right direction and that it works at all and it looks like it's responding so that's good so uh, the thing is with the extruder you probably saw me change it in the configuration file earlier but the minimum extrusion temperature I set it to 160 that means that if if your temperature for your hot end is reading anything below 160 then it's not going to extrude the motor is gonna lock it's a safety thing so you're not trying to force your filament through uh, but instead you know at that point you're guaranteed to at least have a temperature that can melt it now even though I'm going all the way up to 230 to melt it you know 160 it could probably still struggle with it and be okay so now that I've got my temperature where I want it since as a first thing I did is I heated it up that's always gonna be the first thing you do is get your temperatures rising because it does take a minute sometimes and as you can see I just clicked extrude and I've got it set at a hundred so it's trying to extrude a hundred millimeters of filament and this will come into play when we go to calibrate in the next video but you can see it I've got filament coming through and it's melting but th this means I have it going the right direction because it's, it's pulling it through I click extrude and it's you can move it the other direction to pull the filament back through but um, as you can see the reverse button but this is what we want and as you can see I haven't mounted my filament yet I just took a strand of it you know I just took a spare strand so that's all you really need to do so for this video you've already been inside the configuration file you've edited your firmware and you have spoken with your XYZ and extruder motors and so far everything should be looking good so make sure that all these steps are lined up before you move on to the next step when we start calibrating because it's very important that all these things are working.